Ah, Spotify. Probably the most pervasive music subscription platform in the history of the human race. Yet when you open the app, you feel confused, overwhelmed perhaps, or at least I do. There's a lot going on here. I'm not necessarily sure what they want me to look at or where they want me to click. Uh, the interface is, is okay, but it's 2023, baby. Ain't nobody got time for okay interfaces. Ain't nobody got time for that. So we're going to take this and we're going to slap some usability on there. We're going to polish this bad boy up and uh, hopefully arrive at a much more modern Spotify. As always, we've got our cheeky little style guide, which I got from essentially just pulling colors and fonts from their brand guidelines. Nice blacks and greens. And they're using a custom proprietary font called Spotify Round, I believe. It's a very pretty font. We're going to keep this one. We've got our user stories as well. Everything that we kind of want to do in this interface, which we're going to use as parameters and guidelines when we're resynthesizing the whole UI. Don't worry, I'm not going to read them because I can't wait to sink my teeth into a juicy Spotify redesign. Let's go. One thing you can do to make your UIs feel a little bit more modern these days is to include a very dark hue of the primary accent color throughout the site, even in large saturated background containers. And here you see I'm kind of doing that while I build out the wireframe. Um, obviously this green is a little too light to be using as a background color, but we address all that later on. Something that really helps me to be productive while I'm doing a very involved redesign is to just do a first pass of something and then if you don't like it or if there's some other treatment you want to experiment with, throw a comment on that component and then just come back to it later. That way you don't get bogged down on one individual component and blow your design time by like 10x. So here we're more or less maintaining the spirit of the primary sidebar navigation, but we're adding some alignment and other treatments to it to make it feel a lot more modern. We're also categorizing the links within a parent category, such as browse or playlists, to help the users find things visually much more quickly. I initially wanted to make this new playlist button pull quite a lot of visual attention, uh, but then I'm kind of realizing that creating a new playlist isn't really a primary function for Spotify. It's something you do maybe once every couple of weeks. So subduing everything into a simple little icon button just to the left of the header. Since Spotify has a very involved multi-layer navigational structure, uh, they're wise to put these back and forward buttons in there to maintain uh, a sense of control for the user uh, if they want to perhaps go back to the last thing they were viewing or they accidentally navigate away. So we're persisting that here and then adding the user menu over to the right as well. It also seemed a little strange to me that they dedicated an entire section in their primary sidebar navigation to search as opposed to just having it in the upper left like pretty much every other application UI does. Um, it seems like they might want to have a dedicated page for search so they can show past search results, but we can still do that with this control, um, but it's now placed in an intuitive way where you can always access it regardless of which part of the application you're viewing. As Spotify's continued to grow, they've moved into different media like podcasts and audiobooks. Um, but unfortunately, they just kind of bolted on the media selector into their existing UI. Why not put it as part of the primary navigation at the header of the site so that you can just switch contexts whenever you want to look at a different media type. Music 
Veterans of the channel will know that this is a design pet peeve of mine. Whenever companies have lots of different internal priorities with lots of different internal projects, they often take their homepage and turn it into just advertisement city where there's hundreds of potential call to actions for me to click on. The problem is when you do that, none of them are distinguished in any way, so my attention doesn't go to any of them, I just feel overwhelmed. So instead what I'm doing is having a prominent featured call to action pull attention strongly to the top. This will be the best recommendation we can possibly give. Um, probably the most tailored one based on Spotify's recommendation engine. And then we can have some secondary recommendations overlaid underneath that. So now that we've presented this strong call to action to the user, we know that their attention is going to jump there immediately when the app loads. After that, it's going to likely scroll down and we need to present to them things that they might be interested in should they not be interested in the primary piece of content. And in this example, I'm going with the most recently or commonly accessed audio items in Spotify. So say Discover Weekly or Liked Songs, whatever that user generally seems to use. Now, although I like the treatment of applying lots of different pictures of artists to something like Discover Weekly that might pique my interest, I do think I'm introducing more usability problems here, where now instead of displaying too much content to the user, we're not really displaying very much at all, and nothing generally stands out to me beyond the primary call to action at the top. Uh, so I end up going back on this and refactoring this UI really significantly uh, to reduce the visual pool of these recent actions. And you'll see that towards the end of the recording here. Um, but for now, just know that I spent an absurd amount of time on this, and that's sometimes just how design works. You have to see things in context for several hours until, you know, the nuanced solution presents itself. I opted to have a floating, currently playing visualizer here because I wanted to just take a different approach to the overall aesthetic. But you have to be very careful with these kinds of controls because they occlude what's behind them. Um, and it's often very, very difficult for engineers to understand all of the paddings such that things don't just get hidden when users keep scrolling. Uh, so giving users a way to just dock it somehow is very important. I use this design pattern all the time and it saves me heaps of time. But whenever you have a series of icon controls in the same container, um, but they're clearly categorized somehow. Here we have shuffle and repeat versus pause, previous and next. These are both controls for the playhead, but they do very different things. Um, separating them with a little bar like this helps the user understand the difference without overwhelming them with labels and other containers. And now I'm adding back in this friends activity social sidebar that used to be in Spotify. I don't know where it went. Maybe I just lost all my friends. <laughs> but I found that this was a really cool way to add a more immersive experience to Spotify. You can see what other people are listening to in real time. And that's really cool. And here you're seeing me use color to indicate activity to the user. Uh, generally speaking, saturated colors on top of an unsaturated background really pull the user's attention. So if you ever want to say, hey, something's happening, here's a notification, or this person's actively live streaming something, you can use a nice saturated accent color to inform them that that's happening.
Mark from the future here, doing a little bit of time traveling, because it turns out OBS nuked the last 20 or so minutes of my footage and all the audio as well. Uh, so just want to show you what I finally came up with. It actually took me an extra day to do all of this because after I finished at the last part you saw in the speed design, I realized that I had introduced a lot of usability problems by trying to do away with the different things you could click on in the existing Spotify UI. And instead I presented the user with almost nothing to engage with. <laughs> So I've applied lots of different treatments here to kind of solve that problem. I've reduced a lot of the padding on these quick links here. I've moved recent actions all together into a dedicated space called history, where if a user really wants to browse through everything they've looked at in the past, they can do that in a dedicated interface. Um, instead, I've got this nice little uh, good morning mark block that just shows all of the most common things I consume, things I'm most likely to click on. Um, I've removed the play button from being on the right because it was taking up a lot of horizontal real estate and moved it over the icon itself. Um, now you can also dismiss this. And I think this UI accomplishes almost everything you'd want to do with Spotify. First of all, my attention goes where? Straight here to this notification. If there's something interesting and relevant to me, it's the first thing I see. You don't need to worry about placing 20,000 different call to actions, just have one really curated one. Then on top of that, if I do want to start browsing other content, I'm presented with the things I'm most likely to engage with first, and then I'm given a spattering of different selections on the homepage for uh, dynamically generated content or other interesting artists that I might want to uh, have a listen to. So let me know what you think. Is this an improvement on the Spotify UI? Leave a comment below and let me know what you would do differently. And uh, as always, I hope you found something meaningful in this. I'll see you next week, folks. Have a lovely week. Bye.